and that's how you welcome him and he will always reveal his power to those that truly know how to welcome him huh come on somebody for the word of God said in Hebrews 4 verse 2 they heard the gospel as well as we did but why did it not profit them huh why did it not profit them because they did not mix the word with faith the word everything that was made that was made was made through the word of God how can then the word of God be unprofitable to someone when everything that God made God made nothing without the word the word ha, is the tool that God used to reveal his power come on and he's declaring to us his word for us to taste and see huh, that he is good to have access to his power we must exercise faith huh? and how does faith come faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God praise God hallelujah and we don't want to just hear hallelujah but we want to mix what we hear with faith in other words it's not just the hearing but it's what is produced through the hearing is faith because what we read earlier from Hebrews 4 said they also heard it come on they also heard we heard and they heard so why didn't they the word profit them it wasn't because we are lucky and they are unlucky come on now the problem here is described by the hebrew writer that they did not mix it with faith and paul said it before that not all men have faith did you hear that not all men have faith come on because faith is not just merely saying i believe i believe i believe i believe and thinking because you keep saying i believe often enough you will believe hello it is god through his spirit bearing witness in your spirit ha huh? that that the power of the word is being unleashed in you and upon your life come on somebody because he describes faith as something that ignites or unleashes the power of the word you got it because faith of himself is not spoken of through the word as powerful but the word of god is spoken of as powerful come on now so because jesus said even if you have faith like a mustard seed you can have great results even mountain can be moved huh if you have faith he said he's not the size of a mustard seed huh and do not doubt huh and speak to the mountain even the mountain will hear you come on but he says his word is powerful come on now because it is so it's not so much your faith that is powerful but it's the word that is powerful that you're putting your faith in and it says it doesn't take much faith to see great result from the word watch that it doesn't what take much faith to see great results from the word you don't have to have great faith okay i'm gonna show you that too praise god and the illustration i'll use to you to consider the word of god like something that is highly flammable 
and it could say what that is what no gasoline and we fill this room with gasoline and much as we fill the room with gasoline in this room it will not explode it will not catch fire though it is it is fl highly flammable not so highly flammable right well, while it is highly flammable they said it will not blaze in flame without as much but he says if you just bring something around it as small as a spark from a fire it will explode and faith is being described like that spark when it says like a mustard seed so the spark is not the great power because you could put that spark anywhere out the door and that won't do any such damage but you put it where that those tons of gasoline is come on now then you're going to see great damage so it's not really the spark of the power of that great explosion it will be the gasoline got it the same way it says the word of god is pregnant with the power of god the word of god is what pregnant with the power of god and the way we unleash that power is true faith you got it hallelujah now that's why it says you got to hear to get that faith oh my god because it says how then you to believe if you didn't hear what would you know what to believe in if your word did not come to you but seeing that the word come to you the word is saying something to you and somebody with the word is declaring something to you huh that's what paul said in romans 10 romans 10 verse 14 how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him that they have not heard so if they have not heard of him are they going to believe in him see he says how shall they hear without a preacher he didn't just say without somebody just to tell them anybody here can tell them but he said this kind of hearing lord jesus i want you to hear something today this kind of hearing he says is not by somebody just telling you it's not a anybody anybody thing there's a reason why he says without a preacher and there's a reason why he says that how shall they preach unless they are sent the sending of those preachers come with power come on now somebody even when jesus had taught his disciples for three and a half, half years and he was about to leave them and he told them hey you wait in the upper room huh and wait there praying to receive power for you shall receive power when the holy spirit is what come upon you ah huh? come on somebody power when the holy spirit is come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in jerusalem in judea in samaria and to the end of the earth come on i mean all over the world huh? now when he had spoken these things while they watched he was taken up and a cloud received them out of their sight huh so he still didn't send them out to preach uh -huh. so that's why i say it's not just anybody just tell you huh he, he says these weren't called preachers just because they are believers because every believer is not a preacher you got to understand that one too and so he says they are anointed for this and there is a power that comes 
from what they are doing. And Jesus determined that they should not go out to declare this without power. Ah. And the word they were sent out to declare is the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. This word of the kingdom was what Jesus preached everywhere he went. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Matthew 4 verse 23, it tells us that everywhere he went, he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He says he went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people. This is what follows the word being preached. Because those who believe in the kingdom of God will believe in its power. And believing in its power will present results. Come on now. Miraculous results will follow. Praise God. And so he also says in Matthew 9 verse 35, Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching the synagogues, preaching what? There it is again, the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Now does that mean that everybody who was sick in Jerusalem and got healed? No, only those who came believing in the word he was teaching and believing in him received that healing. Come on, because it is gotten by faith. No one was healed by Jesus without faith in Jesus and his message. Come on, somebody. That's why the Pharisees and the Sadducees never got that healing. Because they didn't believe in his message and they did not believe in him. All they came about was to test him through questions. But all the tests they test him through questions, they never really humble themselves to be his disciples. Huh? So their testing him did not lead to discipleship. It only led them to stand off. Huh? And have all manner of accusations against him. Though he answered all their questions accurately from the word. Huh? They tried to trick him by bringing woman adultery. To say, hey, if you're this, you, you, if you are the Christ, what do you say about this? What should we do with this woman? What do you say we should do? Moses says we should stone her to death. What do you say? So he's looking for Jesus to speak against the prophets. And say if he's a prophet, he won't speak against the prophets. Come on now. Because they know he was preaching about forgiveness. So they were saying, oh this, how do you settle your teaching with this now? We've caught this woman. Uh -huh. In the very act. So they weren't there for no lesson to become a disciple. They were there to show him up as a false teacher. But he of course showed that they were the ones who were false. He said, let the one without sin cast the first stone. Hello. And of course the older one lives first. And the younger ones, seeing that the older ones left, they also left. And Jesus turned to the woman and said, woman, <laughs> Where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So Jesus did not condone her sinfulness. In fact, he gave her an instruction. Though she was forgiven, he says, go and sin. No more. Come on now. And that is a key note to remain persons who think this is some leash Jesus is giving us. Some pre-leaf to say, is that your sinners are understanding you're still ready? Just go and try your best. 
No, he says, go and sin. No more. Amen. And they also came to him, asking him, is it right for a man to divorce? Is why for any reasons? Because they know Moses told them and gave them a bill of divorce to divorce their wives, didn't he? And Jesus also taught on that in Matthew 19, verse 3, saying, They asked him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? Jesus said to them, Have you read, not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? Huh? And he says, What? Huh? For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife the two shall become one flesh so then they are no longer but one but they are two are they are two but one they are no longer two but they are one flesh got it so therefore what God has joined together let no man what separate then they said to him in other words he answered accurately what they are saying but if we go with what you say Moses didn't tell us that they said they said why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and put her away and he said to them Moses because of the hardness of your hearts permitted you to divorce your wives come on he permitted you to do it come on now but if you cannot say Moses command you to do it see how it is used there right he says he permitted you to do it huh to, to divorce your wives but from the beginning it was not so he said because your hearts so hard Huh? And so wicked and so vile. He saw that for many of you it was best that she left than she stay under such torture and harm under your hand. So Moses permitted you to release her. Come on now. That was what Jesus was saying to her today. Amen. And it, but what did Jesus say to them now? But Jesus says, I say to you, this is his command. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for what? Except for sexual immorality. So is there an exception? Yes, there is. And the exception is what? Sexual immorality. So if, that, if they don't have that exception and marries another, that person commits what? Adultery. Got it? So he said, whoever marries her who is divorced, that like that, without that exception of sexual immorality, commits adultery. And his disciples said to him, and I'm sure one was there as a chief leader to say it, which was Peter, because he was already married. Huh? And he said, if such is the case of the man with his wife, it is better not to marry so their questions even made Jesus' disciples question him. Come on now. And question whether such a teaching was really comfortable to live with or really relevant to the times they were in. And Jesus says, uh -uh, all cannot accept this saying, but only to those to whom it has been given. All cannot accept it. Accept what? What saying? Which saying is it? The saying that Peter makes, or the disciple made it saying, if such is the case that there's only one exception, it is better not to marry. One exception sexual immorality one because the question was for any reason which would be far more than one but he gave only one got it 
And Peter, hearing that, said, If it's only if such the case that is only one reason, then it is better not to marry. And the Lord says, It all cannot accept this saying that it is better not to marry. Come, all cannot accept it. But to, only to those who it has been given. In other words, some are given such as instruction and some are not. And I gave you examples of that already through the scriptures. How Isaiah was told to marry and Isaiah had children as a prophet over Israel and had wife and children. But Jeremiah as a prophet over Israel was told not to marry and not to take wife. Right, so they are both prophets, but given different instruction regarding taking wife and having children. Come on, both still men of God, but both having different instruction. Correct? So it says, not all can accept this saying, but only to whom it has been given. For then Jesus tell you more. He speaks about you not. And we know that eunuchs are not people going for marriage. And three cases of eunuchs Jesus speaks about in verse 12 of Matthew 19. He speaks about eunuchs who were born that way from their mother's womb. Come on. Born as persons who have no such desires for any mate. Hello. Are to have children. He says those are eunuchs. From their mother's womb. Jesus said that. And he says they are eunuchs. Who were made eunuchs by men. Men did surgical things to them. To make them eunuchs. That they could not perform any sexual activities. Come on. The kings would offer of eunuchs. To take care of their wives or their concubines because they could do nothing to them sexually, being eunuchs. Huh? So they said they are eunuchs or eunuchs made eunuchs by men. And then he says they are eunuchs who are eunuchs who made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of God. Eunuchs that what? Made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. In other words, it says, because of the calling on their life. Huh? And what God has called them to do. They have determined that they will not engage in anything like that. That can be of a deterrent or injunction to their calling in the Lord. So it said, they made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom. And it says, he who is able to accept it. Let him accept it. Is that clear? Because Paul was one of it. Who accept it. And he took no bride. Nor have no children. And he did so for the kingdom. Right. So, But Paul did not tell persons. It was wrong for them to be married. No. And some took it that way. And even made false doctrine out of it. And Paul had to address it later. That some had some seducing doctrines of devils and demons about some meat not to be eaten and forbidding men to marry. Remember? Praise God. That's for 1 Timothy 4. Right. 1 Timothy 4. Paul addressed that with Timothy. So he found that that problem still existed even after Christ's ascension. Huh? When Paul was on the scene. Paul was writing now to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 to 3. He says, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time some will depart from the faith. Giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons. Not doctrines of the Lord. Doctrines of demons. Demons of doctrines. Teachings. Speaking lies in hypocrisy and having their own conscience seared with what? A hot iron. Huh? Forbidding to marry. There's one. 
and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving to those who believe and know the truth. Those who believe and what? And know the truth. Come on. If you know the truth, then you'll know Jesus already taught nothing that a man eat defiles him because what goes into his mouth does not go into his heart. What is what comes out of his heart through his mouth that defiles him. Jesus already taught his disciples that. But many don't accept that still today. So what Jesus taught then is still a problem today. Because many still wrestle to receive what he declared. He's not there declaring a religion. He's there declaring the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom is not about religion. Ha uh ha. -huh. And that's what persons don't understand. So often persons who hear really a religious ear, they keep on hearing religion every time they hear the Lord talk. And it's those people that struggle the most to receive what Jesus is saying. Because he's not the religion is bound out of an effort through the flesh. Religion is what? Is bound to an effort through the flesh to please God. But what Christ is speaking about is God's will being perfected in us through his spirit. For we are not children of God through the flesh. We are children of God through the spirit. And he says the law was given to those who were all up in the flesh. And those who are in their flesh are mindful of the flesh. He says they cannot please God. Neither are they subjected to the laws of God. That's why they still could not keep them. Come on. But Paul said in Romans 8, huh? verse 5 to 9, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. That's what he's talking about. He says, for to be carnally minded is death. Huh? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Hallelujah. Because the carnal mind is what? enmity against God hostile aggressive rebellious contentious against God for it is not subjected to the law of God there it is nor indeed can be there it is nor indeed can be so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God now some would say then well all of us in the flesh so none of us can but that's not what Paul was saying at all the following verse Paul says to the believers but you are not in the flesh well, but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you now if any man does not have the spirit of Christ he is not his hello and he said and if christ is in you if christ is in you what the body is dead because of sin the body will not take part in anything that is sinful so he says the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life the spirit is active because of what righteousness come on Christ is not in you to condone sin Christ is in you to fulfill the righteous requirement of the law to reveal the righteousness of God hello so you cannot continue to sin and say you have that come on that would be a lie 
Glory to God. So Jesus didn't come preaching religion because they had religion, but they were still in sin. But no one can be in Christ and still in sin. Aha! Well, that's the powerful one. Anyone in Christ is a new creation. Glory to God. Ah. Now John said it. 1 John 3 verse 7 to verse 9. Little children, let no one deceive you. Come on. Let what? Give me some more up. Let me show them further up. Let's start a little before verse 7. Probably about 4 or so. Okay. About 4. Yeah. Whoever commits sin, huh? Also commits what? Lawlessness. And sin is what? Lawlessness. And you know that he, that is who? Christ was manifested to do what? To take away sin and in him in who him is who in Christ is what there is no sin he said whoever abides in him does not sin whoever sin he says has neither seen him nor known him they are lying to the knowing they only pretending that they know him. And many will say that in a day we have cast out devils with, we prophesy, but the Lord will say, I never knew you. You lawless ones. Come on. That's in Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23. Huh? Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23 says, Not everyone, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven huh but he who what does the will of my father in heaven he says many will say to me in that day what day is that in the day of judgment many will say to me lord lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name huh done many wonders in your name is it people out in the world casting out demons in Jesus name is it people out in the world that prophesying in Jesus name is it people out in the world that is doing miracles in Jesus name these are people associated with the church but they're still practicing sin and what did Jesus say to them and he says and then I will declare to them I never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness what is lawlessness sin the casting out of devils was not the sin the prophesying was not the sin the doing miracles in his name was not the sin but they were still practicing sin they were doing those things while still practicing sin come on you cannot serve sin and the Lord I'm telling you come on so we're going back to first John 3 verse 4 to 6 and emphasize what we just read to you whoever commits sin also commits what lawlessness and sin is lawlessness and you know that he was manifested to do what take away our sin not to condone our sin or cover up our sin take it away and he says and in him there is no sin whoever abides in him does not sin 
whoever sin has neither seen him nor known him that's why he'll say to them i never knew you he says in verse 7 little children let no one deceive you he who practices righteousness is righteous not he who practices he who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous come on now hello and who is that righteous jesus is righteous he says he who practices righteousness is righteous just as jesus is righteous because that's what jesus did he practiced righteousness he says he who sins is of the devil oh! my god he who sins is of the devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning come on he said from the beginning the devil sinned he has never stopped he's still sinning that's the devil so he said if you have sinned before and you have not stopped sinning you are just like your father the devil watch that he says for this purpose the son of god the who the son of god was manifested to do what he became flesh and came here that he might destroy the works of the devil what is the works of the devil sin whoever has been born of god does not sin there's verse 9 whoever has been born of god does not sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin why because he has been born of god is only jesus born of god not at all so you see we are also born of god through the word and the spirit of god and he says those who are born of god cannot sin because they're born of god not because they're born of men but because they're born of god they were born of men already in sin but now being born of god they are a new creature in him second corinthians 5 verse 17 says any behold huh therefore if any man is in christ he is a new creation huh all things have passed away and behold what all things become new come on now we're giving you line upon line Precept upon precept that if you believe the word the power of the word i said the power of the word I said the power of the word imagine the word of God the word of God cause these to spring out of dust the word of God cause this to spring out of dust come on the word of God cause these to spring out of dust talk to me somebody word of god caused these to spring out of dust that man used and cut and made furniture the word and you're saying the word can't do it for you the devil is a liar the word only can make you feel nice but the word can't stop you from sin the devil is a liar come on somebody everything that was made was made by the word of God hello and he says even Paul himself says there are some that have a form of godliness huh? but deny the what 
The power thereof. Oh my God. The power of godliness. The power of being godly. Is living a godly life. And you cannot live a godly life. In sin. You cannot. Live a godly life. In sin. There is no godly sinner. There is no holy sinner. There is no righteous sinner. Come on. But the word of God calls us in Christ saints, not sinners. Who we were before Christ came is not who we are since Christ came. If we are who we were before he came, and after it came then Christ has been of no profit to us hello hallelujah Paul says many have a form of godliness have a what they talk godly they want to look godly but their lives are not godly they still meddling sin God is not in sin. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, Paul says to Timothy, from such people, turn away. For he says, is of this sort. That's the kind of people, he says, who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded with sins and led away by various lusts. Huh? always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth always learning but still in sin Paul says from such people turn away they are people of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith disapproved because the Lord says anyone that put their shoulder to the plow and take it back not word you must make up your mind that this is it come on now you know the life you're living in sin is not it it's only leading to a dead end but the life that God is calling you to is an eternal life hello and there's no eternal life in sin Woo! there is no eternal life in sin hallelujah let me make that abundantly clear for you come on when Adam and Eve sin God run them out the garden of Eden and place cherubims to guard the tree of life he says less if they eat of it they live forever if God intended for sinner to live forever that would be the case right there the Lord could just say stay right there Adam and Eve but not so the tree of life was guarded not even the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that caused them sin and death to come upon them but he guarded the tree of life says lest they eat of that tree of life and live forever it's not for sinners it is not for sinners and the, the God that served us time is still the same God you're serving today it's not a different God He's calling it to holiness. Hallelujah. And you've got to understand. He's not compromising on the word. God is not going to bend his word. To suit your life condition. You must change. To come in accordance. With the word. The word is not going to change for you. You must change. For the word of God. So he commands men everywhere 
to repent for his kingdom is at hand and his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom his kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness of truth of holiness none but the righteous shall dwell there and he says it is those who practice what righteousness that is righteous peter said it this is a good one peter said it in first peter 1 verse 14 to 16 he says as obedient children as what obedient children not conforming yourselves to the former loss farmer is the old time where you used to go on in sin it can't be farmer if you're still doing it come on you can't say it's a farmer school if you're still going there so when you say a farmer school you mean that i no longer attend that school come on he says not conforming yourself to the former loss as in your ignorance but as he who call you as what as he who call you is holy you also be holy in what in some of your conduct in most of your conduct because nobody not perfect so then tell you don't no he says in all your conduct because it is written be holy for i am holy so let them tell you something else to make you feel comfortable in your sin you and them can go to the same place but i know those who want a different address must go with the driver that's going there but if you don't want to go where that driver is going tell him to let you off huh but don't sit down there praying not to get there when it's a one-stop drive and he's going one speed one speed ticket huh how you want to be with the righteous my god then you must practice righteousness stick with who can teach you to do it but you don't work with those who mingling huh work with those who mingling and upset you both will make it you're only fooling yourself jesus said it to the jews that they had blind leaders they had what they had blind leaders because the leaders there were practicing sin jesus wasn't practicing sin and jesus said to them if blind leading blind what why am both will fall is not one by fall that's matthew 15 saying matthew 15 verse 14 jesus said let them alone they are blind leaders of the blind who they leading they are blind leaders and they leading blind and he said if blind leads the blind both will fall into the ditch but if one is seen leading the blind do the blind blind they will escape the ditch come on now but they don't want to follow those who are telling them we have stopped they want to follow those who are telling them we sin like our own man but we just pray god to forgive we pray for we as we pray for you those they love to follow blind guides and jesus criticized that position jesus did not congratulate or approve that position jesus stood against it come on now 
and said to them except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven cannot come on that's Matthew 5 verse 20 say in Matthew 5 verse 20 for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees so there's a righteousness that exceeds theirs they have a level of righteousness but just says it must exceed their standard of righteousness to enter the kingdom he said if you don't exceed it you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven no means no chance come on so you've got to get the word and I'm not mixing up I'm not trying to tell you something to make your flesh feel good and sacrifice your soul for that I'm telling you what the word says hallelujah and it says many do not endure sound doctrine they rather corrupt doctrine they rather go for all the verse about oh no one no one righteous no not one they rather go for verses all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God they don't read the following verse if anyone say he have no sin he have not sinned he, he, he's a liar and the truth is not in for all of us sinners they, they don't read the other verse you see so they, they of course want to choose verse just to make them feel comfortable in their sinful state while claiming salvation that is a lie and it's a big fat hypocrisy and hypocrites will not make it is a lake of fire for all hypocrites Jesus never called his disciples hypocrites true disciples are not hypocrites and so you got to get the thing right and I'm here to tell you because I love you get the thing right hello in so doing you won't have to fear our dread is return but you'll have a peace in your soul a peace in your spirit that you know that you are the Lord's and he is yours amen whether you live or you die you are his come on but if you live in and practice sin believe me he will declare to you I never knew you and I'm saying that doesn't have to be your position seek first the kingdom of God and all is righteousness and all is what and all is what his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you come on there's, a, a, there's an all his righteousness that many people forget all they want to just come to church and get the things but he said uh uh the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you huh? glory to God that's Matthew 6 verse 33 hallelujah 
We'll close with that today. I wanted just to stir up your hearts to consider the faith you have been called to. This faith comes by hearing. It comes by what? Hearing. Glory to God. And God is the one that brings that hearing to you. You know what the Lord just reminded me? He said to Moses, you know, who make the man, who make the dumb, and who make the blind? Who made the tongue? Moses had a stammering tongue. Some impediment, whether it was stammering or lisp of tongue. But he had some speech impediment. And the Lord said to him, said, Who made the mouth? Come on. Because it is God that made even the blind man so when God made him did God know he was blind when God made a deaf did he not know that he was deaf come on one born blind and they were asking you know what sin did this man do for this to happen to him? God said, no man, this is for the glory of God. Hello, somebody. Huh? Because God knows how to change things. He said, if you are not hearing, God can cause you to hear. Yebo shamasa. You're hearing me. If you are not hearing, God can cause you to hear because hearing is a spiritual thing. But you must believe. And the one who God has sent can release hearing even to the deaf sight to the blind speech to the mute come on mobility to those who are paralyzed and crippled life to the dead healing to the sick and the oppressed come on somebody come on stand me we're gonna pray Roshi Believe Come on, worship God in this place. Ribe Come on, pray in this place. Come here, Sister Foster. Kuroshi Bababasi in the Libesato. Robo Shamasaya. Lift your hands to Jesus. Roshi Bakata Masi to Roshi. In Jesus' name. Loose her now and set her free. Come out of this body, out from the pit, in the pit, in the name of Jesus, in the pit, in the name of Jesus, out. 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 Nimama Korosha Basaya in the Bekandala Masi Toroshe Amamoshe 
out of her. Loose this body. You cannot shipwreck this. This is not for you. This don't belong to you. We be worshippers. You have ex you have overstayed your stay here. Out of this body now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come on, praise it. We be worshippers. Say to rush in there. Loose fire of God, purifying fire, burn out, burn out the root, draw them out. Father, to your angels be an assignment, buffet, smite, torture, and afflict every spirit. To command them to the pit where they come from, drive them into outer darkness, drive them down in the pit, butter and smite them now in the name of Jesus, buffet and smite them. In the name of Jesus, drive them out, inch man, doorkeeper, and all. In the name of Jesus, drive them into Oho Shebasa, out of darkness, chains unto everlasting darkness. Drag them down into the abyss. In the name of Jesus, Yebo Shabasa, out, out of her. Rebecca Boshi Barabosete. Remember more Shama Mama Sheba Haya. Nimeke Hoshaba Hato. Rebecca to Hoshinde. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now. Hosheba Sat. Out of her. Out of her. Free. The sunset free is free. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus drag you up by the root. Every generational curse, every spells and eggs will break in Jesus' name. Yes, necromantic spirits, familiar spirits, out, 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 out. Spirit of error out, blasphemous spirits out. Spirit of the Antichrist, we shut you down, we destroy and uproot you, we overthrow you right now. In the name of Jesus, Hebo Shamasa, Hoho Shimahaya. In the name of Jesus, yes, God, destroy the destroyer, Lord. Destroy the destroyer. Destroy the destroyer. Destroy the destroyer. In the name of Jesus. Remove your pestilence and plague. Nice some pestilence. Tormenting spirits. Mind controlling spirits. Out. Out. Hebo Shabaseto. Down to the bottomless pit where you come from. Leave her alone. She don't belong to you. Ebo Shaba Seto. Ebo Shama Seta. In the name of Jesus. Out. Out. Fire. 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 Rabba Babo She. Bebe Bo Shata Rabba Se. Ebe Bo Shama Saya. Fuck a Roshi. My mama said to Roshi. Out. Out this minute, this minute, loose her, Lord, and fill her with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Living God, we be Shamama Seto, fall afresh. Kiba o shalaba seto, fall afresh. Kila alaba seto, yes God, fall afresh. Kiba o shalaba seto, yes God, in Jesus' name, fill her. Let the rivers of living waters flood her soul, flood her innermost being. 
Yes, God. Drive out every unclean spirit. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever, Lord. Yes, God. The scepter of your kingdom is not broken. Pierce his armor. Bind the strong man. Cast down every image. Destroy every stronghold. And let your kingdom come. Manifest your kingdom in our heart. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kurababo bo shatta la basete. Kota and clear the way, Lord. Disappoint the enemy's plans. We bo shatta la basetu. We bo shatta la basetu. Ke toro shabasa. E ho shabasitu. Namase ke tele besi koro shimai. Him nime se koro shata. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Yes, God. All the glory belongs to you. Tibo shabasata. All the glory belongs to you, King of Kings. And Lord of Lords, be exalted, O great King. Yes, anoint her afresh. Fill her with new wine. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Let her bask in the glory of your presence. Ibo Shata. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. You are God. You are Lord Timo Shamasa. Thank you, Lord. Kibo Shemasaya. Yes, God. Renew. Refresh. Revive. Heal and deliver. Yes, God. Kuroshi besata. Yes, my God. Yes, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're awesome. We knew our strength. We knew our health. Hallelujah. We knew her soul. We knew her spirit. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Kohoshima Sata. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Glory to the name of Jesus. Come on, give God the glory. Give God the glory in here. Glory to God. Magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord, saints. Magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. All that know him, magnify him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come here, Tesla. Let me pray for you. Pray Bo Shaba say to rush in there. In the name of Jesus. Lord, your anointing and fire destroys every yoke of the enemy. I release your anointing and fire against that old dragon. 
and I devour and destroy all his fins, all his ties. Oh, oh, oh shame, Master. Had there had tear down. Hallelujah. All his obstructions and distractions that he has placed in the way. I pray that grace, Shebo Shama, say to rush in there, will be released right now over her life. Multiply the shatter in the name of Jesus. Multiply the effect. Hallelujah. Have grace and glory. Sweet anointing. Refresh your spirit, man. Refresh your soul. Refresh your heart in your presence. His fullness of joy. Make her to joy again, O God. He must shake or rabbassi to rush in the Rikete de Beko Shama Massa, Rebeki Bosha Tarabasi to Rebekanda Massaya. Raise your up, O God, to know you and the power of your resurrection. He never cut to Roshama. Revive her again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Fire, fire, fire of God. Come on, Shamasa. Kluho Shiba Katoroshinde. Kluder Robo Shabasa Taramasito. With fire. In the name of Jesus. From the hand of the enemy. And that you will be glorified in this and more in Jesus' name. Come on, give God the praise. Come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah. Come here, Joshua. Let me pray for you. Gloko shatarabasi. Ibo shatarabasi tiribesaya. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I raise up Joshua before you. You have called him by name and for a purpose is declared. Hebosha, that the salvation of the Lord will manifest in him and through him to the lives of many that will sit before and hear him. And so I pray that grace will increase now. You will awake the lion, awake the giant, awake, hallelujah, the warrior within him to rise and to proclaim and to hold on to his inheritance in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I release anointing and fire over him anointing and fire within him anointing and fire over his room anointing and fire over his school anointing and fire oh shabba over his spirit of friends and companions anointing and fire over his spirit his soul and his body rebebo shabba katara masito rebebo shama masike ndele mesaya ibo shatara basa fill him rosha maka moshe masi rebebo shama sa with the holy ghost and baptize him with holy ghost and with fire rabba babo shama mama masito Ibo shama let it burn, let it burn, oh God. Ibo shama masi kuroshende. Ibo shatarabasa let it burn like a roaring flame. Let it ignite and shine bright throughout the world to see. Ibo shama put out every fear and doubt, silence every insecurities and double-mindedness, and let him be established and rooted and grounded in you. Oh God, you are my father. 
Oshamasa, and I give him to you. Hallelujah. And do you Oshimasi too, that you will reveal yourself to him too, and that he will see you high and lift it up on your train. Nemo Shama, fill the temple. Hebo Shata, that a fresh anointing will come upon him now. In the name of Jesus, to run through troops and to leap over walls and to accomplish the purpose, the mandate you have upon his life. In the name of Jesus, come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Pastor Stephen, so come let me pray for you. Koshatarabasitu. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for Pastor Stevenson. Thank you for the sacrifice, the willingness, and the faithfulness to be in the house. Hallelujah. And I praise you for his commitment to your work, to your servant, and to the service. As you have proclaimed double anointing, I speak for double anointing over him and over his household. That indeed the reservoir will be loose over him right now God in the name of Jesus financially socially maritally physically spiritually emotionally ministerially in the name of Jesus unlock your church you now God in the name of Jesus and let the heavens ring and let demons and darkness flee in the name of Jesus everywhere they're hanging around hell rooms are hanging looking for flesh drive them back uh, seal him and keep his integrity keep his walk keep his talk holy sexuality keep his integrity that no devil in hell will get his crown in the name of Jesus but that his testimony his integrity will be intact in the name of Jesus and that you will be glorified in him and through him Mamo Shamasa nations will come and know that this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes now God provide housing for him Mamo Shamasa that is his own for he has lived in rain one long enough and you have positioned him in a city provide one that will be his and I declare that the heavens be open to release and direct to that one and if it be that is the one that is that that finance will come and doors will open for him to occupy too but if it is you not so then you will direct otherwise but we look to you for that directive and claim the victory in advance in Jesus name Hallelujah. amen and amen Come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, man, that's what it come about. We know that God give us victory in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace and anointing. That is in the house moving right now. Yes, God. You are here. And we honor you. We give you praise, Father. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah. Be glorified in our midst, O oh God. Take all the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. That's due unto your name. Hallelujah. Show up in an awesome way for everyone that is here and that is watching us, that desires to see a mighty move of God in their life. Let it show up today. May the atmosphere shift to accommodate the mighty move you're about to make in them and through them. He commit them in your hands and he commit this ministry in your hands. Increase in faith deliverance ministries international that you will breathe through it to a God one more time and that your kingdom will manifest in an awesome way in the house in the lives of your people 
for your glory. We give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise one more time. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to give you a chance to sow and then let you, let you off. Our time is up. Praise God. What we got to uh, give you, speak our last word to those who are watching us online. And then we release you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Envelope side here. Heard someone just under the name of so please. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. So, those who are watching online, you're watching Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministry International. You're at 3 East Street, Montego, Jamaica. We're still declaring the gospel of Christ. And we want persons to know that we have a book out there that actually declares that in a handy notebook form. You place it in it, not containing everything, but the major, major foundational teachings of the gospel of the kingdom, which we believe is the gospel that Jesus preached. We have a book out there called the kingdom of God, the gospel that Jesus preached. It's on Amazon. Look for us on Amazon. Just type in on Amazon.com, Richard V. Fagan. And of course, the book will pop up. You can order it anywhere around the world and learn more about the gospel that we declare here. And it's the gospel that Jesus preached. Praise God. And so I wanted to have your own copy to build your faith. If you believe in it already, still check it out. It's always good to sharpen and to increase your learning in the Lord because you cannot operate at a greater level than you know. Your operation level is based on the knowledge that God has unveiled to you. And that's why he has given you instructors, teachers in the body of Christ to bring you in the fullness of the knowledge of Christ that you grow in the full statue of him. It's the knowledge of Christ that propels you into that fullness. Praise God. And so the devil knows that what you're ignorant of can be come even your downfall. So we encourage you to press in, get the knowledge and watch what God is saying. You, you can ask the Lord if you can do so, the Lord will bear witness with your spirit. Because the Lord is not double-tongued. The devil is, but God is not. God is truthful. And so you just ask him and he will direct you what to do in regard to that. Check out our ministry. It's, and you can see more of our teachings on Facebook. Send a friend's request to Richard B. Fagan. And we plugged into our live stream services. We have five live stream services per week. This is only one of them. Praise God. And they all stream on Facebook five times a week. Five different services. Praise God. And so we want you to get the best of the word and knowledge in the word that will build your most holy faith in the Lord. And we hope that you really use it. Not just be a hearer word, but a doer of the word. Amen. Praise God. And so you'll really get the full benefits of the word in your life. Amen. You can see more of the teaching on our YouTube channel. Look for us on YouTube and subscribe. We have added more text to the YouTube version for you to do your study, searching scriptures with scriptures. Praise God to add more to your faith. Hallelujah. And also you can check us out. Our website is increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. Of course, you can sow to us through that website. For those who have been asking, how do we sow to the ministry? You go to the website, of course, and you, all information is there on the front page. How to do so? Any other questions? You can call me, Richard V. Fagan, at 876-839-9390-876-557-2427. The information is all on the screen. Of course, uh, we are here to assist you and build your faith in the Lord. So connect with us and let us see. Together we can accomplish more than we can apart. Praise God. So we keep you in our prayers. And we hope that you will see some greater days ahead. As you put the word in effect in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You're blessed today. Well, be strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Bless you all.